Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ray and welcome to our Objective-C Data Types tutorial series. In this video tutorial, we're gonna take a look at enumerations and bit masks. Okay, so enumerations, you can think of those as a way of defining a list of values of which you can only select one of them. An example would be, say you're making an app to keep track of video games and you wanna keep track of what type of video game this is. Might be RPG game, might be a strategy game, might be an action game. Well, you can make a list of these potential values that's called an enumeration of those values. So if you're a C programmer, you might be familiar with the enum type. Well, since Objective-C is based on, built on top of C, you could still use that from the C99 standard. But we're not going to cover that here because there's now a better way. And there's a new macro that Apple's defined called NSEnum. And the great thing about NSEnum is it lets you specify the data, the size of the storage for that enumeration. So, for example, if you want to use an NS integer as the backing for the values in there, you can just specify them right here, give your enumeration a name, and then list out the values. And the benefits of doing it this way is A, you have better type safety. Compiler can do a little more checking for you. And B, it gives some nice hints to the compiler for things like switch statements. All right, so let's dive in with a demo. As usual, I'm going to create the single view application template. And I'm going to name this Hello Enum Bitmask. So I'll just save this here to my desktop. And we're going to start by playing around with enumerations. I'm in application app delegate. So remember from the slides, the syntax for nsenum is we use type def nsenum, and then you give a type and a name. For the type in this case, we're just going to use int, and for the name, we'll call it video game type. And inside here, you can list out all your values. Now the way this works behind the scenes is the compiler is going to set the first value list here to zero by default and the next one to one up from that. So one, two, three, and so on. But you can override this if you want by just using the equal sign and setting them to a particular value. We don't need to do that here, so I'll just leave it to the default behavior. So then to use your enumeration, you just use the name of the enumeration and you give it a variable name. And then optionally, you can set it to an initial value. So if we wanted to set it to video game type FPS, we could do that. And for now, let's just log out the size of this. So you can see here, it's made the size of the type four because that's the size of int and the values three. Let's just for fun, uh, is it zero, one, two, three? Let's make this five and let's make the size here bigger. Let's make it a uh, long long. So now we have the size of type eight and the values five. Now it's complaining because I haven't used, um, it's, I've specified the int instead of long int there. So say we have a switch statement here and we do video game type RPG and NS log RPG. And let's say that's all we do. I'm going to format this. A trick is if you use Command A and Command I, it'll format everything nicely for you. So if I run that, notice I get a warning here. It's telling me, hey, some of the enumerations that you have aren't in your case statement. And that's a good thing to be warned about. Um, so now I can just go NS log default. Or I could have added all the other cases in there. And either way, now the compiler will be happy because every case is covered. Okay, next up we're gonna talk about bit masks. And bit masks are kinda of cool. You can think of them as an efficient way to store a large number of true and false values. So as an example, imagine you're making a spaceship game and you wanna keep track of what category of objects are in your game. So objects might be a player object, they might be an alien object, and they might be an enemy object. And some objects may actually be a combination of these two. For example, an alien is both an alien and an enemy. So you, wanna, you would want both of those to be set to true. So you could do this in multiple ways. One is you could have a big long list of Booleans and you can just set them to be true and false. But if you wanted to be really efficient about it, you could just store them in a single integer value. And the way you do it is you basically chop up the integer into individual bits and you'd say whether what each bit means in terms of what flag it is. So an example, here's a short. And we're saying that the bit to the far right in the short is going to be the player flag and uh, the bit to the left of that's gonna be the enemy flag and so on. So in our example of the alien, we just set both of those bits to one. 
and here's what it would look like in binary. Everything would be zero except for the flags we want to set. And the way binary works, remember, is the first bit would be two to the power of uh, zero, which would be one. Next would be two to the power of one, which is two, two to the power of two, which is four, and so on. So because those two bits are set, two to the power of uh, two plus four is we basically get six. Again, with bitmask, the old C style way of doing things here was you define a whole bunch of constants and you give them a particular type and you basically use the bit shift operator to set these up. So one, you know, as you can see here, that's sh shifting over the uh, a one, the certain number of uh, bits to get all these categories we're trying to set up here. But we're not really gonna cover that because there's a better way yet again. There's another uh, macro set up by Apple called NS options. And you can spe specify the type here and give it a name and then you just list them out as you would before. Now, the benefit of this is, first of all, it just reads a lot better because now everything is all together in one little block and it forces them to all be the same type. So it avoids some kind of strange mistake where you might make the first two NS integer and the last one like a plain integer or a long long or something like that. Okay, let's continue with an example of bitmask this time. So remember the syntax for that is very similar to NS enum, but instead of NS enum, use NS options. And you give it the type you want to use, we'll use int here, and then you give it the name. Inside the brackets, you list out all of your options. And it's usually convenient to use the bit shift operator like this. So the first one will be shifted over zero spots, and the next one, which we'll use for enemy, would be shifted over one spot, and so on. To work with bitmask, you typically use the bitwise operators, which we'll cover in a separate video tutorial, but here's a quick preview. So we make our entity category category equal to entity category enemy and entity category alien. Notice we use the or operator to or the two bit fields together to get the combination of both enemy and aliens bit mass. And to kind of visualize what's going on here, I'm gonna log all these out and I've to save some typing, I've already written those out there. So I'm just logging out each of these individual bit mask as hex and I'm also logging out the category itself. And if I run that, I'll see, you know, each of the enumerations are, you know, one shifted over the appropriate spots, and the combination of these two fields, two and four, is six. So, so far, so good. And the way you typically work with bit masks like this is if you say, if category and entity category player, and, and what that's doing is it's anding your category with just the player, and if they, if they match, basically, um, if it, it would be non-zero, and so this would become true. And so in that case, we know that this is a player object. And we can repeat this for the other two categories. Running the code, we see that this category is both an enemy and the alien, so we're good to go. All right, that's it for this video tutorial, but before we go, I wanted to leave you guys with a challenge. So I want you to see for yourselves the advantage of using these macros, and we're just gonna take one example. Take that video game type uh, example from the demo and replace it with the old way of doing things. And then what I want you to do, and you can just use this code right here, then what I want you to do is delete the default case in the case statement, and then build your code and see what happens that's different than the way it was when we tried this before. And ask yourself, why did that happen, and how does this to show you one of the advantages of using this new macro style. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and we'll see you next time.